Hi, I'm Christiane and I'm currently backpacking around Turkey. I started my trip in Istanbul as a solo traveller with no plans whatsoever and I was very fortunate that in my first few days in Istanbul I met a big group of boys who I've been travelling together with for the past week or so. Together we've explored Çeşme, Izmir, Pamukkale and now we've arrived in the coastal town of Ola Deniz where we'll be staying for four nights in this magnificent villa which I'll show you more of later in the video. But before I get into today's vlog I'd like to introduce the sponsors of today's video Surfshark. Surfshark are a VPN which stands for Virtual Private Network, which has been an essential tool for me to have on my device, especially in Turkey. Because you see, what a VPN does is it not only turns any internet connection you have into a private one, preventing any potential hackers getting in onto your device, but with the click of a button, you can change your virtual location of your laptop or your device to pretty much anywhere in the world. Why is this useful, I hear you ask? Well, you can access Netflix and TV shows that are only available in certain countries, switching to the US is amazing for this. You can access websites, medias and services that may not be available in your country or the country that you're currently in. But in Turkey, I've been specifically using Surfshark to go on booking.com. For some reason, you can't book properties in Turkey while you're physically in Turkey, which as a backpacker who needs to make reservations on the go, that would be kind of frustrating. But when I switch Surfshark back to the UK, I am able to use booking.com to make reservations in Turkey and everyone's a winner. Surfshark is one of the only VPNs which you can use on an unlimited number of your devices with just the one account and you can get an incredible discount of 83% off and an extra four months for free when you use my code backpacking or using the link in the description. Yeah, it's just like the, like, yeah, um, yeah, we've just come down to Ola Deniz Beach, which is where the Blue Lagoon is. Um, and one of the most popular things that you can do in Ola Deniz and the Fetier area is to go paragliding. Now, if you don't know, this is something that I did when I was about 11. So literally this town is where me and my family used to come like every year for like five or six years when I was a teenager. So it's really funny for me to be back here seeing all this and I have done the paragliding before but I was literally about 11 and so I would really love to do it again and I think I am going to do it again. Honestly the weather is not the best today, it's a little bit overcast so we're just going to suss out the situation because we have booked in for today and if we decide not to we'll postpone it to tomorrow if we can. Yeah. Okay so we've spoken to Gravity which is who we booked the paragliding with and postponed it till tomorrow because hopefully it will be a bit sunnier tomorrow and we'll have a nicer experience. But I just saw this coffee shop called Pellini right next to the Gravity HQ and it was a really cool coffee shop. Like you can pick what country you would like the coffee beans from and he tells you how strong they are and then he proper filters the coffee beans down to make a really cool coffee. Anyway, I got a basic bitch iced caramel latte because that's what I like to drink. We're just gonna enjoy the beach for an hour or so. It's a lovely temperature actually. It's probably like 20 degrees so it's just kind of like perfect shorts and t-shirt weather without it being too hot, which is not bad for the complete off season. Well, how is it? Good but I think there is too much water. A little bit watery. Oh, that's a shame. It was so promising with all of his fancy setup <laughs> and all that for it to be a little bit watery. You can try. Mine is good. It's very, very sweet. Yours is an Americano though. And I don't, uh, I don't tend to drink black coffee. Yeah, it's quite watery. Oh, what a shame. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm kind of hungover. <laughs> <laughs> so we did go out last night in Fetier because apparently the Hizarano strip literally closed about three days ago for the off season and it was Saturday night so we wanted a big night so yeah we went to this club in Fetier and we drank a lot but it was very very fun and so yeah it's just <laughs> It's just been a slow day today, which is I think another good reason why we've postponed the paragliding to be honest. No drinking tonight. Not allowed.
I am terrible at skimming stones. I'm not even going to try, but this is an excellent beach to do it at though, because the water is just so lovely and calm. Uh, well, apart from these tiny, tiny little waves at the shoreline, it's just so beautifully calm out there. Even though it's kind of overcast, I actually love this light. It's so, so, so gorgeous and everything just looks kind of iridescent almost. I'm super tempted to go in the water. I do actually have my swimmers, but I'm not in them right now. So I probably won't go in, but I'm really just appreciating looking at the water and the sun glistening down. It's kind of like this really light pastel blue and like icy silvery tones as the sun goes down. It's really beautiful. Okay, we changed our minds. The water is just so lovely and warm. I just quickly got into my swimmers, <laughs> just covered myself with a towel to get changed. I'm tying my hair above my head because I had a blow dry just yesterday and I don't want to ruin it, so I want to keep my hair dry. I guess that'll do. Oh, well, that's nice. <laughs> Have a parachute, a paraglider down. Looks like he's getting some help pretty quick. He should be fine. That taxi driver is so, so funny. He dropped us in town earlier and gave us his business card. So we called him again and he just yeah, pulled up with the tunes. Um, and he was actually really nice because initially we drove past where he was supposed to be dropping us off. And so for a moment we thought, oh, he's doing us over. He just wants to um, like, you know, just have more money off of us. But then he turned around, he dropped us off and he actually charged us less. He was like, no, don't pay me the whole thing. And so we were like, oh, you're actually a genuine nice guy, which was really pre pleasant. And um, we'll definitely call him again for a party taxi on the way home. But anyway, we have just rocked up in the town of Kayakoi. It was only 10, 15 minutes from Ola Denise or from Hizaronu. And apparently there's an abandoned village here. I think that's what we're looking at up here on this mountain. But what also it seems is that there's just loads of lovely little market stalls and a few cafes as well, which are quite cute and rustic. It's reminding me a little bit of the mountains in Mexico. Um, so we're just waiting for the other guys to arrive in a different taxi and then we are going to explore this side of town. Here come the boys. Good morning. Hello. Hello, Hello everyone. Oh. The team is here. Yes. Small team. What is 12.50 yeah. lira entry, which is about one pound. And we're heading straight up into the abandoned village. Oh, they didn't warn us about this. It's just been a constant climb uphill. Oh, there's the top. Oh, wow. View from this side. Ocean's over here. That pink building there. Uh huh. Is a church and it's all boarded up, but you can sneak in. So that's where we're gonna go. Ah, that one, that one right there. We're gonna go inside. Jack will tell you some independence facts. Isn't there any independence facts other than that the Greeks left in 1923 during the War of Independence? <laughs> that's all you need. That's all I know. <laughs> 1923. So it's been abandoned. Do the maths. 98 years. So if you come here in two years' time, it will be the 100 year anniversary of abandonment. I don't think that's something to particularly be celebrated, but you never know, there might be people here with balloons. What's funny is that when you're a backpacker traveling Turkey, 
the most likely thing is that you've bought some kind of fake designer or brand thing and so it's literally like a common question if someone's wearing like a pair of nike shoes to be like are those real or are those fake if you were back home no one would ever ask that people would just assume they're real but here it's just like are they fake and chances are yeah they probably are and i am an example of that with my fake balenciagas which i love they're very dirty now though so the reason that no one is living here anymore and that it got abandoned is because there was rumours that it was haunted and that was there was ghosts around and no one wanted to live in a town where there was ghosts and so everyone left. I mean, I'd be on board with that. I wouldn't want to move anywhere that was thought to be haunted. No way. Okay, here we are back at Olu Denise Beach, ready for our paragliding. We're, we've booked with this gravity company. They seem pretty legit, so hopefully they're good and we all don't end up in the water. It costs 850 lira, which is like 60 quid, 65 quid, which is actually very reasonable for paragliding. And like I mentioned, this is like one of the most famous and popular places to do it in the world and the aerial view that you get of the Blue Lagoon and Ola Denise Beach is literally like an internationally known like world-class view so I'm really looking forward to it it's gonna be good here they are coming into land oh go on up again go back down Boom. nice one how you feeling James shit health Aww. Land down on the beach. I've got my one bag. Yeah, oh James, it's gonna be good. So we're all travelling up in a van which is climbing its way up the mountain. We've managed to convince Jeremy to come as well. Yeehee! Okay, we have arrived at the top of the mountain. They're getting all of our parachutes out. This is Apo Mai. Yeehee! My instructor. <laughs> or the person taking me up. And I've actually paid for the photo package, uh, which means that I get to use their GoPro with a really long stick. So hopefully you're going to see some epic shots. And Apo also has a 360 degree camera for some cool photos. Are we going from 2000 meters? Yes. Wow. What a view. So he said that we wear our helmets now for takeoff, but then once we've taken off, we can take the helmets off. Come in front of me. Okay. Keep standing. No problem. Okay, ready to run. Ready to run. Yeah. yeah. Run. Woohoo! Woohoo! Yeah. Okay. Nailed it. 
Christina, Perfect. yes. How was your flight? It was wonderful. I very, very like happy. It. Thank you. <gasps> Welcome to the villa. I kind of wish I showed you this when we first moved in because the villa has never been tidy since, but now seems like a good time because we're actually all packing up to leave. So let me show you what we've been living in for the past few days. Coming through the front door, we are number one. Oh, by the way, there's been nine of us staying here, up to 11. We had two extra guests at some point. We have a toilet as you walk in and then you walk straight into the lovely living room. This is the balcony where everyone's been having drinks every night, which looks out onto the beautiful pool, which is freezing. Like literally freezing, not even like just slightly cold. Like it's, you, you go in and, and it hurts. It hurts your skin, <laughs> but, but it's nice to look at and to lay beside. Bear in mind, it is mid-November, it's off-season. So we paid £60 per night for the entire villa. So between nine of us, it's like, no, a bit more than £60. Basically, it ended up being like a tenner a night. This is the kitchen. And moving on up to the bedroom quarters. So this is like the, the main bathroom, I guess. Jeremy and I lucked out with the double bedroom with arguably the best view in the whole villa. We got to wake up to this every morning, which was absolutely glorious. And the sun sets over on that side as well, which has been so nice. Um, we had an ensuite in that bedroom. And then on the top floor, there was just a twin room here and a twin room here. Moving on down to the ground floor, over here, we have a bathroom in there, that's like the ground floor bathroom. Another double room in here, with a baby cot, just in case you want to bring your babies. Washing machine, which has been very useful and very well used by all of us because, as you may have seen in a previous vlog, it was kind of expensive to get our laundry done by like an external person. Um, this has been a sofa bed, which I think Ollie has been sleeping in between the sofa bed and this twin room. Ollie! I think he's in the bathroom. We're literally leaving in five minutes, so I hope he's gonna be ready. Um, but the ground floor then takes you up to the outdoor living space and to the pool. If this was a real episode of MTV Cribs, I, I would jump in the pool for you, but we are leaving in five minutes to go out onto a day trip, so not today. I will link this Airbnb down below if you want to stay. I don't know if it's always this cheap, but obviously because it's off season, it's been cheap. And to be fair, like even though we can't really use the pool because it's a bit cold, it's still been good. Like it's still been warm enough to sunbathe. It's still been warm enough to go out in the day and swim in the sea. And so it still feels like it's a hundred percent worth it, especially for the price. Okay, we are now at the bus station in Fetier, going to our next destination. So we're actually going to be heading to Cache tonight along the coast, but today we're going to be doing a little day trip in Saclacant Gorge, but I think I'm just going to make that an entire video in itself. So I'm going to end this vlog here. I really hope you and guys enjoyed the video. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye. And thanks again to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to click the link in the description to make the most of the awesome discount.